All right, welcome to the CESS meeting. Uh, we're resuming our conversation on records and tuples. And uh, we've had, uh, since our since we last spoke, we, uh, we were uh, stuck on the matter of which of the bad options uh, we <laughs> were on the table. And uh, on the Agoric side, Mark and Matthew have been uh, working hard to figure out a way to, to move forward. So Mark, uh, let's take it away. So, okay, so I'll, get, I'll, I'll, I'll actually do it sort of from my subjective point of view uh, on the record now, uh, and, then, and then we can uh, proceed from there. Um, so I was objecting to records and tuples as primitives because of uh, old code that um, uh, would check for, for primitive and then say, well, if it's a primitive, it's, it's, it's fine. There can't be any hidden authority here, let it through. Uh, and Matthew had previously raised the thing about, well, you know, CES can block box. And uh, I, I was sort of misunderstanding that or mishearing it or something as CES can block box. Um, uh, uh, which, it, which is unacceptable for CES as a general solution because CES is trying to accept the whole normal programming language, all normal programming practices, um, so that it can run all sorts of old code that's not written to run under CES, but obeys best practices like not, not monkey patching primordials. Um, uh, the case splitting that I only recently understood from Matthew that completely resolves this is that there's old CES and there's new CES, meaning there's copies of CES in old code whose security needs to be maintained. And then there is the maintained CES project that people keep using and that we keep maintaining as the spec evolves. And once you do the case splitting, the dilemma I was worried about goes away. And the reason it goes away is that old CES, because of the whitelisting mechanism and because box is already not on the whitelist, will remove box. And therefore the security uh, dangers for old CES does not arise because box, the whole box constructor is simply censored. Now this means this only works if box is required to create boxes. So we still have an absolute requirement under this rationale uh, that boxes cannot be created by syntax. That if you don't have the box constructor has been removed, then it's impossible to create boxes. So that takes care of old CES. And then for new CES, which is something we're maintaining, uh, we simply stop testing for deep primitiveness uh, in the old ways. Part of the records and tuples proposal is to provide a new predicate, which is needed anyway for is this deeply primitive, which you can't tell by just type of or using the object constructor. Um, so every place that, that, that maintains CES uh, needs to know if something is primitive, it would switch to the new primitive and only after it successfully switches everything over to the new primitive, would we stop censoring the box constructor. And at that point, we can accept the new language with records and tuples and with box and without the security danger. Um, uh, so, uh, and I think that case splitting uh, not only apply, one of the things I was very worried about is uh, we know that CES essentially has been, you know, the, the core of CES has been reinvented several times. So we should presume today that it's also still reinvented several times by people out there in the wild that we don't know about. I keep coming across academic papers that try to secure JavaScript and that rediscover elements of CES on their own or, 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 or partially cite us and then rediscover other things. I know that the history of Salesforce was Caridi uh, was kind of reinventing CES just from the enablers in JavaScript without knowing about OCAP theory and just from, from uh, what, it's, what it seemed like was possible. Uh, so the reason I'm still okay under that scenario is anything that is successfully securing JavaScript in a CES-like way must already have a whitelisting mechanism like this because there's enough dangerous other things that come in that need to be removed because they're not on the whitelist. Uh, so anything that's, that's successfully securing JavaScript 
in a cess like way must already have a whitelisting mechanism like this. So I think the case, same case splitting applies. So, um, yeah, uh, I could never explain the CES uh, case like as well as Mark. Um, one case I tried to understand, but I uh, admit I'm not familiar enough with is the case of um, legacy realms and membranes uh, between them and what it takes to keep that use case secure. Um, my understanding of those use cases is there isn't really a whitelisting uh, mechanism like that, uh, which means a box might be uh, might end up getting constructed. Um, however, uh, since we are talking about two different realms, we might be able to leverage the language to block a box from being usable in the other realm and thus uh, piercing the membrane. Um, I would love to be uh, told I'm wrong and that those environments do censor uh, the box constructor and this wouldn't be a concern similarly, uh, but I honestly do not know enough uh, about this use case to, uh, to be authoritative here. And so just to try to understand what you're saying, you're talking about uh, same domain iframe kind of? Yeah. So same domain iframe, uh, I'm assuming that when you create a realm in uh, same domain iframe, uh, I don't know if you're censoring all the APIs, uh, all, all the globals of that iframe, and if you would, would be removing the box constructor in them. I don't know if you ever have a case where you need to put a membrane between the uh, incubator realm and uh, a created realm. And in that case, uh, is it possible for the incubator realm to create boxes and pass them uh, to a created realm? Um, I think the, also the, 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 we should, uh, I've always objected to this incubator and created realm as the thing to focus on. Uh, the hard case are mutually suspicious realms. When you have an incub incubator realm and a created realm, you've got suspicion in one direction. Um, uh, the incubator realm can create two created realms, put a membrane between them and introduce them to each other. Now you have mutual suspicion. So that's the hard case to focus on. Right. And so if that's the only case we actually care about, um, and if those created realms uh, do uh, clean up their global and uh, censor the box constructor, the same um, the same reason sets would be safe uh, membranes like this or systems built on top of uh, realm membranes would be safe as well. Uh, I, it's, it just feels, I don't know enough if, if that's actually the case in, in, so, in those environments. So, so this, is, this is what we use today at Salesforce. This is exactly what we, what we use. So I believe that's not a problem. And the reason why that should not be a problem if we get to implement the checks in the in the uh, unboxing method to only unbox if you if, if the realm uh, associated to the to the box is the realm that is trying to unbox in it um, is because imagine that the the incubator realm creates that record and has a box on it and give it to, to, the, to the creator realm, what we call blue and red. Yeah. They give it from blue to red. Red will not be able to open that up because it will fail by unboxing it. Um, that, so that, 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 that case is okay. Um, the, the case that is a, 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 a little more tricky is that assuming that you could access the box prototype method from the other realm to try to uh, so, unbox the thing on the other end. That case is impossible because when you create a membrane and you try to access the box in one side, it will map that box to the other side. So, so when sorry, you I think I was not clear enough on the context here. Uh, I, I entirely agree. So this is what this is the reason I, I said uh, to be entirely safe, 
having unboxed, uh, checked the uh, realm uh, where the box was created uh, would guarantee that the uh, multi-realm use case like that would never be, uh, exp th there would never be a problem. Uh, however, this is a contentious point. This is something uh, Jordan is pushing uh, back against. Uh, and he would like uh, the unbox to behave, to not do a realm check, basically. He would be able to like pluck the uh, unbox from another realm and apply into a box created locally without it uh, throwing. Um, and that's what I'm wondering. Is it something we can actually accommodate or is it- uh, I don't think so. I, I don't think so. I'll push back on that two, two main reasons. Uh, the, the one, what you mentioned before, like we are in that as an area, we have that as an area where if the thing is a primitive, we don't know, we're just blindly give it to the other guy and the other guy might, might try to access the box to fail. Uh, but the secondary reason I think is more important is to have some coherence with the shadow realm, where in the shadow realm as an area, you will never be able to unbox because uh, you're gonna get an error because you, you cannot get access to an object from, uh, from another realm. And I believe uh, Google will probably have the same stand that they have for the realms when it comes to mixing the, uh, the, the object graph from different realms. Yeah, in an iframe, you will be able to do that if you have access to the iframe's uh, prototypes to ask, to try to unbox with the, with the foreign prototype, and that, that should be fine. And there's some precedent in the web IDL for that. Most likely, uh, I remember some of the um, uh, web components, APIs, registry of web components, stuff like that, that you must have access to the other uh, um, uh, the, the other realm API in order to try to access or do something that is meaningful uh, is that, in any way. Already, there. That, that case, is that, is that case still same origin or is the web component case uh, where they're concerned only about cross origin? There is no cross origin. There's uh, no cross, yeah, like same, same origin, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's just that uh, you, you might register, like in the case of web components, like you might register components in different documents and you might be able to instantiate them and move them around. But when you move them around, like you create an element for an iframe and then you move it to the main window and this element now will do some creation of other elements is no longer tied to the old iframe anymore. Uh, is remapped to the iframe that received the thing. So there's some, some precedent there in terms of Oh, you must have the thing on the other side in order to do something with it, um, uh, which I think is fine. But the, the fatal one is like, if we allow that, then it's just simply going to be uh, broken for shadow shadow realm because in yeah, the yeah. shadow realm you never will be able to do that, and you will be like, what what's going on here? Like, there's no reason to have that. Yeah, that, that means Shadow Realm would have to prevent any box from being passed uh, across the boundary, which is. Uh, yeah. Which, makes which is which is a no go because it's yeah. a primitive value. So yeah. Well, I mean, it would be possible by doing a removal of all the boxes before sending and then reconstructing a new record on the other side, recreating, replacing. Yeah, but then boxes. that's different from a, a symbol. Like you're giving yeah. a symbol to the other guy, symbol coming back. But I don't think that will fly. But okay. um, we we can talk to Jordan about. It. I don't know if he's around today. So, so let me take a stance on, a, a, on, on, on another controversy and how it's related to this one. And, and in this, and what I'm about to say, I'm, I, th I think I'm gonna be contradicting something I had previously said to Matthew, um, uh, which is uh, if the ability to unbox is realm sensitive, then we should put the unboxing on the constructor, not on the prototype, because people will come to think of the ability to unbox as being something that is related to a protection domain. And over time, people, people will migrate their protection domain thinking from realm separation to compartment separation. So if, if the ability to unbox is local to a protection domain, something that's seen as useful that you can't unbox 
uh, after it's passed through another protection domain, then if we put the unboxing operation on the constructor, then CES can treat the box constructor the way it treats the date constructor or the function constructor as local to a compartment. And so, I already saw on the thread that people seem to be, that mostly people seem okay with uh, box dot deref rather than um, uh, putting it on the prototype. People seem okay with that, even if they're somewhat resistant. It's not a showstopper. Yeah, I think uh, I'm okay with that. Um, I, I, I don't see there. I, I, when it comes to primitive, we already have the precedent for the dot something that the dot notation on a primitive that is tied to the local prototype, not to the remote prototype. So um, I'm, I'm fine either way, but uh, certainly right. fine. The, the, problem, the problem is that that between compartments, they all share the prototype. They can only differ in their constructors. And I can you send that in? It's, sorry, I didn't quite get that. Within, mark. within within CES, within one realm, but between different compartments. Let's take the the, um, uh, the date constructor as the 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 simplest, clearest example, uh, which is in the start compartment. Uh, you've got a fully powerful date constructor that still has date dot now on it as a static. Um, in other compartments, you have a a safe date constructor that you from which you cannot find the current time. However, both of them point to the same date dot prototype. Instances, instances created by any of them are instances that inherit from the same date dot prototype. So if you ask any of them, uh, if you, you do the instance of check uh, for a date created by any of them using the any of these constructors, the answer will be yes, because the instance of check rendezvous on the prototype. Um, uh, uh, furthermore, the construct, the, the, the inert constructor pattern or the safe constructor pattern uh, as, um, is that uh, from any of these constructors, if you say date dot prototype dot constructor, the shared prototypes dot constructor property only points back at the safe date. Um, uh, so I, so the, the uh, and, and, uh, and for some things like function, where there is no safe one to be generally shared because the entire concept of function is specific to a global because of scoping, we put a inert, that's the inert constructor pattern, where if you say uh, function dot prototype dot constructor, you get a function that only that looks like a function constructor, but only throws. Um, so what I would the way I would adapt this to box is that every compartment can have its own box constructor, so they can separately virtualize box. Um, they can have different deref behaviors as statics on the box constructor, but box dot prototype leads to the same shared prototype where the prototype itself has no deref behavior, so it should have no deref method. And the prototypes dot constructor property points back at a box constructor that is safely shared. And the only way to make it safely shared across all these compartments is to is for its deref to never deref anything because it has to be shared between different protection domains. I see. I, I, I get that. I get that. But the, the difference between for me, the difference between a box and a data is that the, the box itself is not an object. The primitive. But if you're going to have the primitives behavior differ between realms, then it then people will come to expect that that and, and if you're doing that in a way that people can use that to treat realms as a protection domain, so they can count on the box being undereffable from within a non-origin protection domain then when they refactor their protection domain code to go from separate realms to separate compartments, we need to maintain the security properties like this that seem like normal security properties that, they've, that they came to count on between realms. I, I, I think I get most of that. Still, for me, it's the same because whether you protect against a deref on the box that deref or you or you do it at the box the prototype that um, uh, unbox sounds like the same thing to me. 
No, because in terms the, of what you're saying, the prototype is shared. Every box constructor points at the same prototype. All boxes in that realm inherit from the same prototype. Oh, I see, I see. So you want the, the constructor to be different. Right. And, and and okay, I got it, I got it, okay. You, I mean, you could make both work, but conceptually, so I, I wanna say quickly, I, I agree. And Mark, actually we don't, uh, you don't contradict something, you don't really contradict something we agreed upon earlier. Because uh, earlier when we discussed this, uh, the original idea was to have uh box uh being equal and not realm specific here at this point since they would only be able to contain objects they to do to perform this check they would also be realm uh, specific so uh making the constructor and, and the unboxing mechanism uh compartment specific uh makes sense Great. Uh, so we're we're good yeah ashley can we spin around and do Niccolo first, and then I'll go after. Uh, OK, yeah. So just to be clear, uh, this means that we can have a box.prototype, but the box.prototype.constructor would not be the box function in compartments. That, that's right. But that would be something that CES does. Uh, as part of uh, as part of set, uh, part of how CES changes JavaScript during lockdown, uh, just as it does for date, right? In normal JavaScript, uh, date dot prototype dot constructor points back at the dangerous date object. Uh, after CES does lockdown, after you do lockdown and you're in a CES environment, uh, date dot prototype dot constructor points back at a safe date that everyone shares. Likewise, function.prototype.constructor points back at a safe, shareable function constructor. And the function constructor is, in order to be safe and shareable, uh, uh, that one has to only throw. So you have to, so the constraint is what is it that is safe and compartment independent? Uh, and it's okay if it's not very useful because nobody looks up the useful one by following the dot constructor property. Making the dot constructor property lead to something that's much less useful, we have found essentially breaks no code. Um, uh, so the, the proposal is that for CES, um, uh, the from any box constructor, uh, box.prototype.constructor leads to a box constructor that can still construct boxes. There's no problem with that. Um, uh, but uh, it's deref um, uh, uh, refuses to dereference any box. And as I'm saying this, I realize it could actually be more permissive than that. It could just be that every box constructor only derefs boxes that it constructs, which you could keep track of with a weak map. Um, uh, and then even the shared one, uh, um, so that, that's a possibility for making it more permissive. As I'm saying this out loud, I'm uncomfortable with it. But even if it, it can't deref anything, uh, nobody will care because nobody finds these things by following the dot constructor property. OK, thanks. So yes, like having a prototype is really nice for us uh, because this means that we can have the value of method that Jordan wants. Because for records, you can unwrap uh, a wrapped record uh, without value of, but for box value of is the only way to to get back the primitive when you put a box when you have a, the object wrapper oh, for the box. Value of the references? No, uh, like if you have the object wrapper of a box, value. Oh, of oh, the object box. wrapper. That's fine. That's fine. Leaving leaving the the value of on the prototype. Because that will be the case across. Let's let's bring it back to what we're generalizing from. Uh, if you create an object wrapper on a primitive in one realm, including an object wrapper of a record or a box, and you pass that to another realm, and in the other realm you you do a box dot prototype dot value of dot call. In other words, you you take the value of method from one realm and you apply it to the object wrapper from another realm. It will still unwrap, correct? Yep, correct. Okay. That's that the case, case of the same iframe, same domain iframe. Okay, right. Same domain iframe. In that case, the value of unwrapping is not a security 
uh, is not useful for security separation of realms. And therefore, there's no reason to preserve that security separation between compartments within a realm. So value of is fine. Yeah, Nicola, that's what, what I was saying before, like in a real case, there's an area where you have a membrane that brings some guarantees there, you will never be able to get your hands on that other box prototype or box uh, method from the other from the other name space because it will be remapped to your local one and it will continue to, to throw. Okay, thanks for the clarification. I think Ashley had something to say. Yes, yeah, so I had to, one thing, and the answer to this could be we don't know, but for, to what you were saying earlier, Mattia, about older iframe based systems. What's, what are the possibilities of iframe based systems not sanitizing the global as well? Because I understand, you know, the separation of object graph, does that pretty much always go hand in hand with reducing access to powerful things like date and fetch? Or could there be quite legitimately people that are purely doing object graph separation, but no other security i'm not a specialist here um but my understanding is since there is a membrane anything that looks like an object would be wrapped anyway so it's not as risky to uh not sanitize but i will let carity uh talk about membranes and uh realms yeah no i, I think uh, i would say that Keeping the separation between a same domain iframe and the main window or, or multiple same domain iframe is very, very hard. We haven't found very, very little code that can actually keep that separation very clean. Uh, and the objective here is that the box doesn't introduce a new thing that might hinder that. Uh, but again, it's just really, really difficult to have that, that separation when it comes to errors and throws and things like that. Like people do crazy things. So um, I think the answer to that is we don't know if there is anything out there in the wild. I doubt it that there is something out there in the wild that is very well uh, thought and implemented and, and that it has a clear separation and it never leaks anything. And it's just very hard to think about something like that in the same domain as an scenario. However, um, I think Keredi had a great point earlier, uh, is that if you do not throw on unboxing uh, for a box that was created in different realm, uh, the shadow box, the shadow realm uh, semantics have to change. And instead of allowing a box through uh, the callable boundary, you now have to decline it. Um, and that makes, uh, membrane building on top of shadow realms uh, either impossible or extremely difficult and inefficient. So, so, so I don't understand that. I was. I'm, I'm I didn't get that either. Yeah, I, I was. I'm glad you brought this up because I was going to ask about that. I'm very uncomfortable with boxes going through the callable boundary. Uh, the the um, uh, for a membrane, you have to reconstruct the box around a proxy anyway. Uh, yes. And um, uh, so uh, for the case where you construct a membrane on top of the callable boundary, does not passing the box make, th I mean, you're already not passing other things through the callable boundary. You're not passing um, objects and then you have to reconstruct proxies without having passed the object. Why isn't not passing the box exactly as much pain for, for reconstructing the membrane as not passing an object? So, First, uh, passing a box that you cannot uh, unbox uh, makes the box nothing more powerful than a unique symbol. Mm -hmm. So I don't believe that creates uh, any hazard. Yeah, I, did, um, I, I, I chose my words carefully. I'm uncomfortable rather than yeah. I object or, yeah. detail or anything like that. So as for... Um, Basically, it allows you to pass a record uh, through um, 
and rely on the identity of the of the record uh, to basically create the proxies on the other side for the content yeah. of the box and um, and replace them. So, I, so I, I I did a mental exercise like a few days ago and I looked at how Carity and implemented iRealm. Uh, I it's it's beautiful engineering. It's really hard to understand. Uh, and, <laughs> like, and that well, one is not even the latest one. So yeah, uh, yeah. we have been working on um, that very, very, very much on the last uh, month. I, I looked at how Box, uh, and, uh, how Box and records could be supported through that if you assume identity being able to uh, put in weak map and uh, assume that um, you can pass them uh, through. Uh, and and it's actually fairly easy to add support without too much performance impact. You can just pass the record through uh, and pass instruction on, uh, on 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 for each content of the box. Basically, a deep uh, a deep a how do you say uh, a deep spread of the the boxes uh, and and passing the record and then just recreating a uh, record on the other side once. Uh, where if you don't have the capability, you need to take a record. If it has boxes, remove all the boxes. So you you have to clone a record uh, that way, um, which would not have the same structure because instead of uh, boxes now you have to put uh, I don't know uh, undefined or symbol in, instead or something like that. Uh, pass it through somehow. Reconstruct a record showing everywhere where there were boxes that were removed. But since you don't have an identity to do that, um, again, I'm not sure what you, you can do. You can't put those symbols in uh, in there. Um, so I'm, I'm not sure how you can easily identify where the holes were uh, and to reconstruct the record on the other side. It, it makes it really much harder to reason about. So I was reading your comment. I was, uh... Um, trying to reason about this clearly more advanced mechanism that we could do. Uh, and I want to specify there are two ways in which I see using records in a, in a membrane on top of, of um, a shadow realm. The first one is to use it as an internal artifact to communicate between the two sides of the membrane because you can give them something and then they can send back that thing. So the coordination between the two sides of the membrane can rely on records and tuples, um, specifically on boxes for, for sharing all these metadata from one side to another. And that will simplify a lot some of the mechanisms that we use to create a, a membrane on top of a shadow realm. So that's just uh, a, uh, very clear to me at this point that it will help a lot. Um, Right now, we're using the, the tricks with the functions and the, the callable functions that put something in memory in one side of the, mem uh, the membrane and on the other side. So you can recollect what the other side is saying about the objects that you, that you control. So we could do a lot easier with boxes through records uh, on, on the internal mechanism of the membrane. The second one is how can we efficiently create a record on the other side that has the proper boxes? And where those boxes will have a proxy of the value on the other side, on the box on the other side. And, and it seems that the, the ideas that you brought up made me think a little bit more. And the way we do it for objects today is all lazy. So I'm, I'm just going to give you, I'm going to give the other side a reference to an object. I'm giving you the metadata of that object. And on the other side, you create a proxy. And if the other side ever interact with that proxy, then you go through the membrane again and you ask what exactly is the other side trying to do. So you ask for that particular piece and then you reconstruct the object from that point of view. In the case of the record, we could, we could, we could do a lot better by saying, um, I'm going to give you a record. You must do something on the other side to reconstruct the record on the other side. And um, I don't have to do any uh, ahead of time processing here i'm just going to give you the record on the other side will say okay i got the record let me see if there are boxes on it let me loop through those boxes let me ask for each of these individual boxes can you give me a proxy 
of what is inside the box on the other side. It's just, and, and it's a single pass. If we have the mechanic, the mechanics for that, it would be a single pass just to reconstruct a new record by replacing the boxes on it. And if we can optimize that in the engine, that would be pretty cool because you just simply loop through it, change it, produce a new record with the new boxes, you're done. And, uh, and that seems very elegant to me. I hope, I hope that we can get to that point. So after this conversation, uh, the assumption that I'm inclined towards uh, is that um, uh, until we try, the, someone should try the experiment. It'd be wonderful if somebody would try the experiment, but I'm not volunteering uh, to write a, a membrane on top of a callable boundary under each of these engineering assumptions and seeing how much pain there actually is if we don't allow boxes to pass through the callable boundary. Uh, but um, uh, so, so first of all, that would be wonderful if somebody did that, but I'm not volunteering. In the absence of anybody trying the experiment, I'm not inclined to introduce a hazard, even if I agree it's not a vulnerability. Um, uh, I'm not inclined to make boxes pass through the callable boundary in the absence of an experiment showing that it's substantially more painful to construct a membrane. Uh, if we don't allow the boxes to pass through. So I, I paste that in the, the link there. This is, in my opinion, uh, obviously I have worked on it. In my opinion, this is the most advanced neon membrane implementation that we have done. Um, what Ma Ma Mathieu, what you, we saw in, in the IROM is kind of a dummy version of these. Uh, and if you spend time on it, and we have a few folks, Rick and JDD and myself, mostly working on this particular file. Um, this, it, it feels to me that with the identity issue, and I know it is an issue because Daniel raised that issue, uh, these uh, in, incoherence between what the record and tuple will, will do if we allow boxes to be passed through the callable membrane, the callable boundary versus uh, what happened with the functions today that are wrapped. And then when they come back, they are wrapped again. So they, they don't preserve the identity, uh, but functions are not, up, are, are not primitive. They're objects while records and tuples are considered primitive. And, and because of that, I feel that the identity of it should, should be preserved. So, uh, so, so I, I, don't, I don't understand that. The way a, 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 a membrane built on top of the callable boundary has to engage in its own mechanisms to preserve identity um, uh, and, uh, you know, and it, with a weak map on each side and, and corresponding things. That's how you build the membrane. For objects, for right. objects. Right, well, and for functions, right? I mean, if you pass a function through, yeah. through the membrane, then it comes back with the same identity. Right, right, right. Yeah, functions on object. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, and the same mechanism would work for boxes. Yes. I. I, I sorry. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. I, okay. Thanks. Uh, does really a function keep identity if you pass from one side to the other one and then back? Doesn't it change identity? And the inconsistency that Daniel pointed out was that. Uh, if you have a function inside of a box, you pass it to one side and then you pass it back. So I'm, I'm just two, 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 So we need to be careful about there's two different layers here. There's a callable boundary itself and there's the membrane on top of the callable boundary. The callable boundary does not preserve identities. A membrane built on top of the callable boundary must preserve identities. Right. Right. Yeah. So for, 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 uh, so, so I, I, I think I understand what you're saying, Mark. Yes, so if, if you give a record with a box to the other side uh, on a membrane on top of a callable boundary and they eventually send back the record, you're gonna get a, the, the original record with the original boxes on it. Good. So yes, so that's a, that's that's a requirement of 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 that membrane. Right, and it's um, not even an additional mechanism. It's just reusing the mechanism that any membrane already has. Correct. Well, well we, in in this particular case, because 
the boxes they, the, the boxes are are going to have uh, a, a type of that is not object right right um, uh, the membrane the initial implementation membranes out, out there in the wild will, will not support that they will not be able to unbox right what until I meant they is introduce the, the capacity or the capability to do the 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 proper uh, process to preserve that identity in the first place. No, I, I agree. What I meant by no additional mechanism is that there's no additional engineering effort. It's just a question of extending the cases that are that that the existing engineering. Um, right, which is uh, the, the, using the, the new predicate to check if the thing has a boxes and then do the extra exercise of reconstructing a record that has different boxes on it and having the proper mapping between the two sides of the membrane. So if it comes back, it comes back at the original record, not as the record on the other side. I think I'm a little uncomfortable at like having some primitives not being able to go through uh, the callable boundary. Yeah, I, I think it's going to just be a problem for, for, for adoption on record on tuples if you just simply block that. Um, I, I, I don't see any problem with letting them pass through the callable boundary. And I see some benefits that, that I, from my point of view, are um, uh, important for implementation of membrane, but also for um, the you, to speed up the process of 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 communicating between the two sides of the membrane for users. There are use cases for uh, shadow realms that don't involve a full membrane uh, and it, like isolation of code executed. And if that code just wants to go and uh, and operate on on the record, whether it has boxes in it or not, and and transform it without touching the boxes, it should be able to do that. Yeah. And, 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 and again, it's, you're, you're, you're so right. It's not really about membranes. It, uh, it's just any kind of protocol that you want to implement. And that's why I was talking about the, the using these mechanisms as an artifact to do the communication between the two sides. So if you had to build your own, let's say you, you have a plugin system, you want to evaluate plugins there, and the plugin has to communicate back to, um, through the callable boundary with the incubator and share some data, some metadata, some objects or whatever, some identities that you use just to control the communication. Um, you could use records and with boxes to do that communication and the identity is preserved. So you could, you could do a lot of things, a simplification mechanism for not having to do all the gymnastics that you will have to do otherwise. Yeah. And, and I think in general, this the difference, be, actually, there is a difference between a uh, box uh, that you cannot unbox and a symbol is that you can actually put it in a, uh, in a weak map. Um, and, and that's very powerful. It actually does solve the, it does solve the problem of um, of uh, symbols that we cannot use as weak map keys uh, currently and, and, and use uh, an identity that's shareable uh, directly across the shadow realm uh, callable boundary. Okay, so let me, let me, try, let me try out a, a question from the opposite direction. Uh, let's say that we do pass boxes through the callable boundary uh, and that you know, we're all agreed that uh, they're not unboxable on the other side. Uh, that they're just opaque, but they but they come back and they preserve identity. Um, so let's now not worry about building a membrane that passes records and tuples and boxes through. Let's say that we that 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 boxes pass through the call boundary as we stated, and now we're just interested in building a normal membrane. So now all of the work that we do to pass objects through and maintain identity on both sides, the encoding that we do to talk about objects across the callable boundary, could that encoding make use of these opaque boxes in order to more efficiently communicate object identity 
across the call boundary and use this box mechanism to preserve the object identity when it comes back so that it becomes much easier to build a normal membrane. Right, that's exactly what, what, what we're doing right now. Instead of How? that thing, it, 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 sorry, in, instead of that thing that, that, that you mentioned, which is uh, I give you this box to the other side, you send me back whenever you want to do an operation on top of that object. You don't, you don't have access to the object. You only have access to the record that represents the object internally. Um, and, and so you do operations on the other side and every, any time that you have to do an operation on top of that object, you send me that object back and I unbox it and use it, do the operation, whether that's a get or a set or, or a has or a defined property or whatever it is, and I return the result back, that, that simplifies the thing. Right now, what we do is different. We give you a function, you give me a right. function back, that function has no identity, I need to right. call it. It sets something globally yeah. uh, on the, in the scope. I take that thing that I have in the scope and I use it as the mapping between the function and the identity wrapping that function. So it's exactly the same thing, but uh, in a more efficient way. Okay, so let me just make sure I'm, I'm getting the punchline here accurately. Um, if we introduce boxes and have them pass through the callable boundary as we talked about, that building a membrane using the box encoding just for normal objects in order to get a membrane across the call boundary, using this as the encoding for communicating across the call boundary, means that for normal purposes, membranes become much cheaper and more straightforward, even when there's no records and tuples and boxes involved in what we're sending across. That's correct, yep. Okay. Could, could I quickly just clarify one thing on whether it's something we, one of the other concerns was passing the boxes across was, whether that would cause engines problems for when they do a quality. So if I'm, when you're comparing two records, you know, and one's come across, well, if I get two records passed across a callable boundary, they have boxes in them, and I now want to compare if they're equal, are engines going to have any issues with the fact that we're trying to compare things as in like, could either side of this different realm be in a different address space or anything, and that they're going to be confused trying to compare these things? Or I'm, not that... an Im I'm not an implementer, but I would say no, because they have the same garbage collector anyways. Mm. Yeah, the, cool. the place where people create separate garbage collectors and separate address spaces uh, is either between different origin iframes or between different agents. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never heard of anybody trying to put uh, different same origin iframes into different address spaces. Cool. Okay. I was making sure we just hadn't dropped one of the previous mm -hmm. points that was raised. It sounds, it sounds like we're all good. And, and as Kiriti mentioned, like we're not introducing anything new. The, the object graphs like themselves are isolated for Shadow Realm, but the uh, linkage between the two is not. You can already reference indirectly through a wrapped function uh, an object from one, uh, one side to another. Uh, it's just you have that you have that like boundary of the uh, wrapped function. Here, the boundary would be different. It would be the box. Yeah, and, and just to be super clear, as much as this sounds like everything is solved, Jordan was very against this realms check in the first place. So there is still work to do. Yeah, we, we, we but... Not work on that. Yeah, yeah. So just yeah, just so, so people can like really think about how because it's a shame that Jordan wasn't here this week. But that this this may come up again just when there's a different group of people in the room. Yeah, and, and one one question that I have is that where this new or not, not a new, but the the since that the clear path forward is to have been as primitive, um, are, are they going to be able to be keys in a weak map? They have to. I mean, I don't see any other way if they're yeah. not. You want to make sure. <laughs> so the, the, and, and this is why I'm still also saying, like, only being able to put a, uh, an object or a function uh, inside a box makes this a, a lot more uh, easy to reason about. And uh, I know there are use cases for putting primitives in, in boxes, but I still don't fully uh, grasp them and how, uh, how prevalent they are. If boxes can go across 
a callable boundary that strengthens the argument about weak maps. Because one objection to putting them in a weak map is you can just emulate that because you can unbox the box, use a, like a finalization registry and kind of emulate weak behavior. But if the other side can't unbox a box, the only way they can hold it weakly is if it's natively supported directly. So that's um, those two things kind of go hand in hand, passing it across a realm, not being able to unbox and whether they can be weak map keys. I think they're tied together. So we are, um auspiciously close to converging on, uh, to concluding on the hour on a high note. Um, so uh, I'd, I'd like, uh, I'd like, uh, so Nicolo has volunteered to summarize what, uh, what we've converged on since we last spoke so that we can um, uh, start from there when, when we, when we resume a conversation on records and tuples. Okay. So I think we now all agree that Record support tuples and boxes can be primitives, and um, the so this is good. Uh, we didn't really talk uh, about uh, the ability of putting primitives instead of boxes. I think we mostly all agree that we can uh, disallow primitives, but we can talk about this again if needed. Uh, we are still discussing about what to do. Uh, with boxes that cross uh, cross realm, that go from one realm to the other, uh, they shouldn't be allowed to be. It should not be possible to unbox a box coming from another realm, but we still have to to decide exactly where it should throw. Uh, I think we all agree that boxes. Uh, containing well, boxes can be used as weak map keys uh, or records and tuples containing boxes. Uh, yeah, so and it's important that we move the unbox uh, function from the prototype to the to the box constructor so that it, it can be replaced in compartments to have a like a same compartment check. That sounds that sounds like what I've heard. Uh, does uh, is, is does that match everybody's understanding? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, I, I would go a little further on on. Uh, I think with regard to boxes across the column boundary, uh, I was the only one who expressed that I'm uncomfortable with it. And then after Caridi's punchline about regular membranes become much easier and probably more efficient, uh, I'm now fully on board. With um, with boxes go through the callable boundary opaquely, but identity preserving. I think that's now very powerful. Okay. Um, yes. One thing that wasn't mentioned, but it is very important, is that there is no way to syntactically uh, create oh. a box. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, a side note on on Jordan's objection, I think the. Uh, going in the in the opposite direction and letting records to be unboxed uh, for another realm uh, will again just get a, a different set of uh, people, a different group to object to. Uh, I'm talking specifically about Google positions and and not introducing any new API that allow this kind of intertwined object graph between realms. One other just clarification. We, I think you can unbox a box from another realm if and only if you have already got hold of the unbox function from that other realm. Right. So like, so it, you know, in the world of callable boundaries, that wouldn't be possible. So it's effectively the same thing, but in other environments where there is a way of actually passing objects across like iframes that don't enforce this or some node API. Like if there's already a way you've been able to get hold of the other realms object graph and they haven't sanitized and you, they give you their unbox function, then yeah, you I, now I, have it because you, you're now, it's now no longer cross realm from the unbox's point of view. Yeah, yeah. And, and, the, and to use Jordan's uh, punchline, like this is not a very common use case anyways. Like you normally don't do those things across iframe and using things when the iframe and yada yada. 
Yeah, this should never be call sensitive to the caller. It's a question of of what unbox primitive you use. So just to take the the flip side of the distinction you just made is if I'm in the realm where the box was made, but I use the unbox function from another realm, then I fail to unbox. Exactly. Well, yeah, and that that's kind of was I was like if we could make this check instead of being uh, from where the box functions and constructors were constructed, but if we could make those sensitive to where they're called from, I think it would alleviate all the problems, but that would be probably very bad in a lot of other. Yeah, uh, that's a, a can of worms inheriting, like that's the whole function dot callly stuff coming mm -hmm. back into the spec. Yeah, we've, we've, we've struggled from the, from the beginning successfully. We've paid an enormous price to avoid dynamic scoping, successfully paid that price. Let's not introduce dynamic scoping. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that that's that's uh, that's good for this week. I think this is excellent progress this week, um, and and we have a pretty clear idea of what the um, what the what the next actions uh, are for this topic. So, um, thank you everyone for joining us for the CES meeting this week. I'm going to pause. I'll stop recording.